Hi, everyone. Welcome to BizLive Happy Hour. We're on episode 28, and we're doing Clash of the Charts today, and I'm joined with Joe Warbington. Hey, Hi, Joe. Hey, Jane. Uh, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Great. I'm excited for this one. It stirred up a lot of uh, pre, pre-episode pre conversations. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to battle out which uh, which chart is better. I will be representing Emily. Uh, she's going to be on my team. She's not here. And you'll be representing Cody. Cody. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. And uh, if the audience has any recommendations, let us know. We'd be happy to battle those charts out, too. Awesome. Yes. Um, I figure while we're letting people get settled, I brought some books. Um, and I know you're over in Paris, so you probably didn't take a bunch of your books with you. So um, I got one, uh, Alberto Cairo, he's a great author, has all kinds of good information. I think he's a teacher at University of Miami here in Florida. Um, And as I was paging through the books, I'm like, I wonder what the first visualization will be that they show. And Alberto's, um, unsurprisingly, is a bar chart. chart. Uh, Standard, it's great, it's very versatile, right? And uh, it can convey a lot of information really quickly. So I, I like that one. And I know uh, listening to him over things, uh, different conferences and stuff that he's done, he's a big proponent for it. But you can get into some pretty crazy ones um, that are like infographic-like or um, all mm-hmm. kinds of crazy stuff that, you know, you're an Adobe Illustrator making visualizations, that type of thing where maybe they're not so interactive, but they tell an amazing story. Um, so the functional art, great book, lots of ideas I've gotten from this over the years. Um, would definitely uh, suggest that one. If others have book suggestions in the audience too, please feel free to type those in. Another one, um, maybe like a, his bar travel. I don't know if this is actually the case. <laughs> Even few, um, he elicits like anger with some people. I think because he wants to boil it down as much as possible to like the data to ink ratio. I don't know if you've heard that, Jane, like you want to put the fewest pixels on the screen as possible to to get the like information over. But the first visualization in this book is this crazy dashboard, which is like gauges all over the place. So he comes out swinging like there are bad visualizations everywhere. (laughs) Um, And I really couldn't find the first actual visualization that he suggests using. It's more like what dashboards should be comprised of. And there's lots of really crazy, uh, maybe not crazy, very, very commonly bad visualizations, lots of 3D pie charts. And um, it's a, it elicits like sweat when I look through this thing, like, oh, people would actually make decisions on that. But you get to some really interesting things towards the end where he uses like, charts inside of tables to really call out things versus just the data. So it's actually a pretty good book, Stephen Few. Um, take it or leave it. I like Cairo stuff a little bit better. Um, <laughs> We've got a weird challenge that came in. <laughs> somebody's reading glasses for a donation? What is that? Challenge, Jane. Uh, donation to where? And Do you have somebody's reading glasses with you? I, no. I don't understand. I don't use uh, reading glasses. I just have normal glasses. (laughs) Twitch is funny. Um, (laughs) If they have a book recommendation, we can add that in. The next one, and this one is probably the one that's closest uh, to my desk, is Cole's book, uh, Cole Kaplanek, on storytelling with data. And she goes out. She'll battle any of the tools, but she's like, you can do everything you need to do in Excel. It just takes a long time. And her first introduction chart is like bad charts are everywhere. Um, so I guess the first absolute thing she puts in there is a pie chart. But also seeing her, um, you get to some really interesting, good purpose-built visualizations that convey a message and call out what you really want to do. Um, so new marriage rate by education, you can clearly see she colored the chart in a certain way. And there's not a lot of you know, clutter around her charts when you get to it. So I highly recommend that book. uh, If people haven't seen it, Storytelling with Data. Yeah, uh, I've heard a lot of recommendations from people who do anything data related to read Storytelling with Data. Nice. Uh, Looks like Christoph is back. 
That's great. Hi, Krista. Yeah, cheers. Oh, what are you drinking today, Jane? Ah, yes. Uh, I'm very French today. I'm drinking rosé, and instead of a chalice, I have a little it's a champagne flute. I don't have many glasses in my apartment, so I have to... Well, they're all <laughs> fancier every yeah, time. They're all so fancy. <laughs> so I, so I took... Uh, last time I just had my mug, which has a constant step, but I'm like, I'm going to dig something out. So for this, this round, I, I brought my goblet. Uh, it's plastic, just so you know, but I received it from one of my first jobs as we were all moving into a new office and it had a theme of like, it was literally Dungeons and Dragons type of theme. It's a very nerdy organization called Epic. And so I figured I'd have some orange juice today in a goblet. Um, to kind of match your different chalice and things. <laughs> pulp or pulp free? Uh, this one has no pulp. I didn't pick it out. I would have picked full pulp. Yeah, more pulp the better. I like the pulp, yeah. It feels healthier. Uh, Christina says Happy New Year. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Christina. Happy New Year to you too. And the last one, Jane, that I have, I just got this yesterday, Rise of the Data Cloud from uh, Frank Slootman, who's the CEO founder of Snowflake. And I, I, it's not like a data visualization book. So there's actually not many visuals at all. The only thing in there, uh, at least the first one that I could find that stood out is probably a dashboard many people have looked at in the last two years. It's the Johns Hopkins COVID dashboard. And that one, we could probably do a whole episode just on that. And more people are more familiar with data and numbers, maybe sick of it and charts and dashboards, but it did, um, I think it like raised the level, right? Of people looking at data and questioning things. Why is that mm -hmm. number going up? What's that line mean? Why is my county like darker red versus another? And the yeah. stuff like we live and breathe all the time. So actually I think it was a really great example and we'd probably do an episode on that as much as we might not want to. <laughs> Maybe this stuff is all over. Yeah, we can look back on it um, and talk about some of that, what we learned from those things. Yogi wants to know when we're going to get Vizlip goblets. That's Ooh. a great question. Anytime. I, we'll, we'll talk to the, the Poland team because they get all the good stuff first. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they can manufacture. Tim, this is for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Looks like we have a few folks on. Should we start with the question too? I threw some out there. So I know we'll get into this. What is your favorite chart? And Jane, I'll, I'll just ask you too, like what is, we know what chart you might start with on the screen. It was table, right? Usually put mm -hmm. that one first, but what's your favorite one? Recently I've been using a lot of tiles and I think people have seen, cause the last few episodes I've been tiles, tiles, tiles. It's like the KPI designer, but it's just, I think it's just faster and easier and you can show more. You don't have to repeat the same things. So yeah, I, I mean, I've been all up on the tiles train. So you and you're going to show more of that today. I'm pretty sure. Uh, we have one question. Uh, Mohammed said he didn't get the name of this book. I think it's the last one that you. The last one, showed. "The Rise of the Data Cloud," by Frank Slootman. Oops, I'm covering up his name there. Um, you can type in Snowflake or Frank. That one's there. Uh, my favorite chart changes regularly. Um, but I, I'm going to go with Sankey and that's what I, I want to show today, perhaps, um, just cause I've been playing around with it a lot lately. I like it shows flows and you can put multiple dimensions in it. So it can be as complex as you need to, or it can tell a very simple story. Um, we have some other comments and things coming in. Yogi's got a Vizlib Sankey Pierce heat map. One of the charts you can show two dimensions and two mentors. Uh, yeah, I actually, I think that's uh, Dalton Ruer and I were talking about that the other day and he's like, I bet you can guess my favorite one. And I, I was like, it's a heat map. Um, he writes articles about that stuff too. So that's definitely my top, top five. I don't know if top three. Um, others, feel free to type yours in. What was your, before Jane, like before you got into analytics and data, when you thought data visualization, what, like what came to mind? I t maps, I think. I think maps. a lot of maps, like uh, just bubbles on maps and things colored in. Yeah, I mean, other than like pie chart, bar chart, 
Yeah, I see maps everywhere. Geospatial stuff, super cool. Totally agree. Um, this one, I hope we get some answers here from folks. Your your least favorite chart. <laughs> um, you want to go first, Jane? What your least favorite one? As long as it's used correctly, like what's your least favorite chart? That's hard. I don't know if I have a least favorite. I know I have one that's like the least used, which is actually going to be the heat map. I don't think I've oh. used the heat map. I, huh? I, I don't, I think I've used a heat map once uh, in all my, in all my apps. So it's definitely my least used. And sometimes I just don't have a reason to show two dimensions and two measures. I can't tell if Andy wrote this as his favorite or least favorite. <laughs> <laughs> both? Uh, maybe both, yeah. We see so much of it, it could become your least favorite. Uh, waterfall. Never understood the benefit of it. Maybe Ooh, I can I change my answer? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to upset Liren because I think we, we love the waterfall, or he loves it too, um, but is misunderstood maybe. Is that what you're going to change it to? Is the waterfall? Sometimes it can be really useful. Oh, this is hard. Now, every t every time someone new puts something in, I'm like, oh, yeah, that one too. <laughs> that one I don't use. Like a uh, Mecco. Mecco chart. Oh, I love the scatter plot. Likes to go with the scatter plot. That's good. Uh, Andy says the bar chart was his least favorite. Mecco, never use it. Um, it looks interesting. Like you could print it out. Uh, have it on a canvas and it makes cool patterns but yeah i i don't draw quick conclusions out of mecos ever i always have to think about why are they showing that and then break it into two different charts <laughs> so the bar chart's so 80s <laughs> maybe we can make some good bar charts um liran's least favorite any table yeah uh, like tables just, aren't... just table of like text and numbers I could see that. I mean, that's like, that's its data in its raw, not rawest form, but raw form, right? Mm -hmm. And most boring form. But there's some really good looking tables when you put some of the visualizations in it. And that's almost, is that cheating then? If you're able to put visualizations in the table, is it still a table? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Pierce says you two are going to have to have a talk. <laughs> violin chart um have you ever seen those jane no i think i'll pull one up because i don't even know what that looks like yeah i know where pierce is going with it they never it never looks like a violin it's um it's one of these a weird like harmonic thing like a sound wave vertical okay. uh, here we'll share your screen there <laughs> Yeah, I um, I think it's a it's like a it's a fancy box plot that shows distribution around points. Ooh, box oh, plots aren't very never useful them either. either. Emily's must be your favorite one is a pie because she wrote pie. <laughs> <laughs> we know that's not the case. <clears throat> no one knows how to read a Mecco chart. If you have to explain it. This is a great quote. When I have to explain my chart to a customer, it's not okay. Um, I've heard that before too. Like It's like a joke. If you have to explain your joke to somebody, it's not good. Same things with your charts. Yeah, or your entire, your entire dashboard. Ooh, a histogram. Do you need special training to use that? Um, it takes a little bit to read it, right? But it shows the shape of the data. So I actually like histograms quite a bit. In that first stage, like, what does the data look like? Am I missing any big things? The best tables have charts in them. This is awesome. We're getting great feedback. Um, spider chart. Which one's a spider chart? Can you find that's uh, the one that kind of, yeah, it looks like a spider web. I believe that's what I'm talking about. Is it a, it's not a radar chart, right? That's different. I think that is what he's talking about. Here, I'll share your screen again. Radar. Yeah, radar chart, spider radar chart. Spider chart. Um, yeah, I don't know. I see them in video games, right? Like where you're comparing characters or comparing the performance of something, but you mm -hmm. have to see lots of them side by side or be able to flip. 
just to show where it's at, it's just like, might as well just give me the numbers for each of these um, dimensions. Interesting. Yamal, uh, slope chart. He really, he's not used a lot, but he really likes the slope chart. So like between, between dates, right? You have these things and you show, is it going up or is it going down? Um, Yamal loves histograms similar to the radar chart. Nice. Yeah, good feedback. Um, I don't think I, I hate any chart. Like even the pie chart, we joke with Emily all the time, right? It's It has its place. It's useful when there's very few slices. And yeah. if the main thing you're trying to say is, look how overwhelmingly um, this one is taking over versus the other option. Um, or are you really going for a 50-50 split? That's easy for us to see, but you get into three, four, five, or tens or hundreds of slices it's the wrong chart absolutely um and then yogi had one other thing on radar charts attribute graphs it's easily easy to compare object oriented data with radar charts hmm. we have lots of dimensions i'll i have uh i think i'll use the sand key in some similar ways to this you can see multiple dimensions cool all right so how are we going to do this? How are we going to battle these things out? And you have yours and mine, and then you know what Emily's is, and I know what Cody's favorite is. Yes. So I was thinking we spend, I think now we have about 10 minutes. Uh, we'll have, how about we take 10 minutes, uh, you start on a chart, and then I'll start on one chart. We'll get 10 minutes, and we see who can just do the most in those 10 minutes. And we can f switch back and forth and have people see our progress. Okay. Um, and you're going to build on your side. I'll build on my side. I'll hit 10. I had to share my screen so that you have it and you can pull it in if you want. Mm -hmm. Um, and for everyone, we're just going to use the most basic, uh, the most basic data, which is like the superstore data. I think a lot of people when they download data, this is a generic one that comes with everything. So yeah, we'll just, we're going to get the most generic data and see who can do the most with it. Are you going to do so that I know, and maybe it's somewhat fair, are you going to start with one visualization and which one is it? Or will I know? <laughs> no. Oh, your screen. <laughs> uh, uh, how about we start with tiles? I'll start on tiles and you can do the KPI designer. Tiles, KPI designer. Okay. Do you want, um, we'll share your screen first because you've already started building tiles or you have a a table there. Yeah, just so everyone can see what oh, we're what it looks like. Yeah. Working with. And I'm gonna use the KPI designer. But I'm gonna look at your screen to see what the shape of the data is. Cause there's no yeah, it's just the raw data is from what I see. So you have like state, region, postal, code, category, subcategory product name, and then number of sales. So it's a lot of sales and profit data. Sales and profit data. OK, top sales. I think I can get, if I'm doing KPI designer, um, yeah, I might have a leg up mm. <laughs> if you're going to start with tiles. And well, do you have the newest version of tiles? Uh, yes. I, Does actually... it have the visual designer right now? From last week, I don't think so. No, I don't believe so. Because um, while you're looking at that, I'll share my screen. Here's how I would start. I'm not going to build from scratch. I'm just going to choose a template. And so from the templates, I'll choose something financial related. Maybe. Budget versus plan, sales, actual trends. KPI challenge. Somebody built that one. Let's do brand progress. I always like this one. And instead of these, I'm going to swap out the names and some of the metrics and throw it in there. So I think I might have a leg up with this one. And it's 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 somewhat cheating. This is Cody's favorite is the KPI designer because you can put whatever chart you want in <laughs> the object. So I don't know if this is a fair assessment. Um, 
I'm going to put, we have about eight minutes left. So as you're building, I'll build here um, the value I want. Sum of sales. That's easy. Two million, two point two million in sales. That's total sales. It's nice to have templates. I think that makes things a lot easier. Uh -huh. um, then what can I do if I? This is, are you, you got to use the table. So is that fair? Can I use a filter first? Like uh, if I to look at something else or if we only have to build with that one visualization? Ooh, no, I think we're allowed to use a table. Okay, That's, you can use a table. Yeah, I think we, we should be allowed to use a table. We're making up rules as we go. <laughs> okay, I re as I said, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into today. So I can see why Cody was like, hey, Peace out. I'm going to go do something else. Do you guys got this? Category. We know sales is here. Some of sales. There's only three categories? I can work with that. Uh, no, you should have more categories. Office supplies, technology. I have furniture, office supplies, and tech. Yeah. Ah, yeah, that is right. And then you can also, there's also subcategories, though. Ooh. Mm, I'm fine with these. <laughs> It'll make it a little bit easier. If I know my total sales is that, I'll do this one as uh, furniture. Change that one out. Like that. And the last one, we'll add another one. Ooh, this is bringing back memories. Um, I worked at Office Max, like when I was in high school, supply store. What was your first job, Jane? I worked at Subway. Nice. You were a sandwich artist? Yes, sandwich <laughs> artist. <laughs> nice. Um, I'm going to take and clone these things. Oop, I need more room. Hmm. I gotta move everything up a little to fit it all. That's okay. Oop. So you have pixel perfect layouts. Are you, should we check and see where you're at on your screen? Yes. Swap over. So you're, ooh, you're into subcategory territory, mm -hmm. looks like. I'm going to try to do something cool and flip it. You're going to have flip charts on, oh, man. That's, um, I Capture. have some interactions I guess I could do. Not that I'm thinking about it. I need to find where it is. Supplies and technology. Okay. Let's see if we got any comments coming in. Nope. And for me to do this, okay. I need to narrow into this. Do you ever do this? Like give yourself this pressure to like, okay, you only have so many minutes. What can you build? Uh, no, I try not to. Okay. Yeah, because I'm like, oh, I don't know if I like this that much. But, to flip, um, I need to use the KPI designer. Is it cheating if I use it? Yes. No. <laughs> oh, what if when we combine them, you can flip to the one that I created? Oh, yeah. Then that we can actually be... work together, not have to compete. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if we can get to that level. Um, three and a half minutes or so. Ooh, okay. And it's, it's going to be at whatever stage it's at.
Uh oh, I think I threw myself off. Sum of sales, good. And the actual value is that. Oh, this is a uh, such a time crunch. <laughs> it is. Uh, two minutes left. Um, we'll swap over so people can see where I'm at in the middle here. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what I want each bar to represent. And I think if I steal the number from here, I can put it in the bar chart. We'll use this. Actual value is this. And for tech. This is simple set analysis. I figure out what the top value should be. Sum of sales, maybe? Good performance area. Hmm. Let's see here. The master's in action. <laughs> Thanks for that. I don't know about that. Um, like I said, we usually have this time without the pressure to build some of this stuff. But this is interesting. I don't think I'd want to be the, the people that go on stage and have to compete for this stuff. No. I like the time to like think about this stuff and experiment with it as I can't even find the last thing that I want to do. I gotta swap out a logo. Um, yeah, there's a lot of like, what am I doing? I don't know how people play video games live. That's uh, okay. <laughs> I couldn't do that. Let's do technology as oh yeah, it looks good. Can I grab that image address? Oh, my <gasps> alarm's off. Oh, this is not good. <laughs> okay, we'll remove. Let's talk about it can you build a great chart in 10 minutes i think you can we might have set ourselves up with some pretty robust charts to start with with 10 mm -hmm. minutes though um you knew a bit more about the data i've seen it once or twice before but we didn't have any pre-built dimensions or measures is what i could show too so i think we could have sped this up if we had modeled the data all out right and had all the yeah. business logic and stuff but we're trying to, if we were to battle these right, it's which one tells a better story? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Who mm. want to go first? You want to talk through yours? Uh, yeah, we can talk through mine. It's not the best. <laughs> so you've got subcategories in here, and then it's just number of discounts, uh, the average sale price, and the average profit made for each of the subcategory. Where were you going to go with it too? Like, I, I know you had a vision in mind. Was there going to be images on it? Because each tile can represent something or maybe different colors you wanted to use. Yeah, I'd love to either add an image in there or have it flip. So then you can see which category it belongs to. And then also you can deep dive into like which state buys the most and maybe like the customer who buys the most or uh, just some some bar charts in there yeah like which region buys the most um, a little flag on it or something too like here's the if you know the top region you could put that mm -hmm. on there yeah interesting yeah it's it can tell so many details right it it's um it's like taking your table and you can just put any of the data you want in there yeah it's like a really each, easy to each tile is table. a row of data yeah, yeah. Or can yeah, be. essentially. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I think you can probably pack it with more information. Mine is, you know, KPI. Um, I, oh, that's maybe why I had a filter on place. Oh, I got close. Um, what I wanted to do was have total sales overall. So we know our big number and then break it out by the three main categories. So I used the template to build it, initial version just because I like the colors of these. I'd want to swap out the main logos, of course. And the thought with these bars, I didn't get time, is to put 
this number here at the edge would be the total sales. So it would just be a bar chart, basically, a, um, to show you the contributions of each of these. And they're probably, this one's a little bit further. The other one would be right here and maybe down here a little bit, right? Um, so they're about a third each making up the total sales. Could have been a pie chart, maybe. But I like the numbers on it to give us context. So I don't know. I think we we should let let people decide which one. Um, again, we'll go back to Jane's here. <laughs> She's got details of subcategories, the discounts, sales, profits. Um, seem, you have a lot more detailed data. Yeah, Definitely. there's more data. It just looks less nice. But you're getting there. Like, you know where you wanted to go with it. Yeah. Um, and then mine is like super high level. Um, and I cheated, I feel like, because I started with a template that you, did, you didn't have for tiles. Um, but combining the two, that would be kind of cool. Because if you're on your subcategory one, you could flip it or vice versa. If mine were tiles and it was furniture, office supplies, and tech, you could flip it and see more details as well. Yeah, that would be cool if we made yours into a tiles and then you could flip it to have details on which category is selling the most, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that would be cool. Nice. Good work, Cody. I I don't know who the winner is here. I like both of them <laughs> it's because they tell different things. Combined, unstoppable. Combined, yes. What is this moral of the story? Working together. <laughs> so <much better. laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, I could argue for both. Um, and they, I both, uh, in a lot of my apps, and I know in yours too, we start using both of these uh, in combination with one another. Yeah, and Tiles has a really cool new feature where you can actually flip on command. Uh, I wasn't allowed to use it, but I'd love to show it off. Yeah, yeah, if you have one, I have an app too. Um, go ahead. If you want to try it, yeah, I'll, I'll pull up an app too that I know has it in it. We can build something out really quickly. So if I just throw in a KPI designer and let's add a random layer, maybe text, and we can just call it like, here is the flipping action. So imagine you put whatever you want in here. You can throw in charts. You can throw in anything um actually i'll throw in a line chart as well or maybe a bar chart because we will be showing off the line so dimension can be category and a measure can be sales average okay so yeah, something like this. So uh, imagine you beautify this, make it all pretty, and then you press not done. You come back, you save this as a master item. Master so, item, yeah. Uh, tiles flip. So then in here, Called flip on click, add a master item. That's not it. Yeah, where it's I think it's in the more general sections like interactivity or viz tips. Actually, I think it's viz tips, right? Because you're using it as a viz tip, but it just happens to flip. And then you pick your content. Oh, you're going to hook it together too. Yeah. Uh, we can so you hook. grab like a set analysis statement that you can throw into your right in the middle of the. Um, I grabbed a lot of them <laughs> in the middle of the expression. So it can, it knows which tile you're on and we'll put the set inside of it. And I think in tiles, last thing is just pick the content at the last part. Boom. Do I have it on hover or on click? 
click um, on it. Yeah, if you have it on click, you have to turn off selections on it, or you can put it on hover, which is actually kind of cool. Then I don't think you have to change the selection mode either. So why is it not coming across? Hmm. Do I have it right? Is it I think so. Right? It wouldn't have been gray. It would have shown something. Correctly. What if we just get rid of this? Actually, it would have worked. You would have seen the chart changing as you hovered over to if it, it was related. There you go. Yeah. It just had the back as gray. Maybe we couldn't read it. Yeah. With uh, what? Five more minutes, if that. You built a KPI and made it flip. You just took this to it. You would have won that challenge. Yeah. <laughs> it's on the biz tips page. Uh, feature request. Emily, you can always make these. You don't have to put them through here, but uh, templates on tiles. Ooh, yeah. Uh, I've been asking for this um, not not that recently, but tiles for detail and KPI. Yes, I love it. OK, we'll talk to the team about that. Definitely. Uh, I had one, too, that I used on an app that we put on the gallery on the website so people can download stuff. And this is it's actually a physical deck of cards. Um, but I have all the images behind them. And so I use the tiles to go through the cards. You can come in here and say, hey, what's this heuristics thing about? Flip it. And then it has the KPI designer as the back of the card and shows us what this thing is all about. And it's actually a really cool set of um, cards like for decisions. And if you're working on something like design, you can go to the design related cards. <laughs> and there's the visualization works, the slice of the pie. Um, with one sense alone. So not all people are equally visually oriented. There's really good stuff about like data literacy in here. So I use the tiles and KPI designer in this one. Um, and we'll make sure people know where to go find this on the, on the website. Ooh, I can see this almost being used as like a tarot card reader. Do you know what those are? I think like... it is meant to be. <laughs> That's what's at the end. <laughs> Like uh, you flip it to see your future. Yep. You randomly pick the three cards or whatever, and then see what you need to do. Yeah. yeah. I'll um I have extra set, so I need to mail you some. Maybe I'll wait till you're back in the US because it'll save a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> but I have another deck. If people want some too, um Murray, who I used to work with at Click, gave me a bunch of these. And so um the Click Innovation and Design team a while back had created these and he said, oh, you really want those? And I'm like, yeah, I'll send them to people. I love these things. So I have, I can't remember how many you sent me, but I'll get a few in the mail to people if you do want them. Wonderful. Nice. Um, next round. This one's on, you're going to go with... Line know, chart. Line chart. And I have to use Sankey. Yes. Well, I like Sankey, so that's the one I want. <laughs> I'm going to duplicate my sheet. Um, this one might go better because we, we know a little bit about it, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll keep my table in there. You have yours. So um, should we pause? Let's check if we missed anything from the chat come through. Um, oh, Johan was saying, check out the Viz Tips page. Cool, we got it. Did we miss anything else there? Do we, maybe we can, um, we can ask if people think if you're going with the line chart versus the sand key chart, which one our judging criteria tells a better story? I think so. In the shortest amount of time, <laughs> maybe that's what it is. Cause I think we've shown if you spend a little bit more time on it, right? You can mm -hmm. make any visualization well, most of them a bit better, easier to read. If we went yeah. with the lower hanging fruit one, like a pie versus a bar chart. There's only so many options you can do, right? Yeah. This one, you can line chart. chart. You're going to have your work cut out for you, but I think you have some tricks up your sleeves. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's sand key versus line chart. I'll set the timer. Um, we Yeah, we have enough time. We're good. Ready? Yes. 
And I'll start with my screen first and then we'll flip over to yours. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, so feel free. Is this how e-athletes feel when they're battling it out in front of people? Maybe, I don't, I have never watched a match. I flipped through it, but when I noticed that like ESPN has esports, I'm like, hmm, it added a level of like legitimacy. <laughs> but then I've also seen like cornhole tournaments, like bags on ESPN. And I thought, well, they're just pulling for whatever, whatever is interesting. I've seen darts on like, uh, on sports channels. And I'm like, is, is darts a sport? Yeah. Uh oh. I'm gonna we're gonna get comments. They're gonna be like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, I'm going sand key. I wanna see. Yeah, we'll start out with category. And I'm I'm sticking with the tried and true total sales. Although you were going with average sales, can I ask why? Do you, you know the data set I think better than I do? Is average because there's multiple years of data in there and yeah, there's multiple like orders and et cetera. So I just want to know like what is the average people spend on each subcategory? On each subcategory, the average sales. But the average is over a certain amount of time, right? Or how discreet that time is. Is it daily data? Uh yeah, it's from 2016. And it looks like it's random, like random order dates. Okay. Well, I'll start with I'll do it even better. I'll add an alternative so I can flip back and forth between total and average. I'm giving away my techniques here. And then I want to see... Um, region, probably. Let's see what we're getting. Can, we, can I take up more of the screen or do I have to keep it in the half of the screen? No, I think we can just go. Okay, I'm going full screen. Yeah. <laughs> gives me more i can read more east west central okay uh um, category we have country and region yeah we can get more discreet oh that's interesting it's all us based uh all us based okay so that one's not as useful state based there we go. And something else. How do they ship their products? Ooh. And I'm going to leave that one off. Maybe I can drill into. I want to take the category and get to your subcategory thing, but I think there's there was a lot of subcategories, right? I think uh, not too many. I'd say one, two, three, four, five, seven subcategories. Oh, there's only seven. Okay, I was worried that it would be like a thousand different subcategories. No, that would be way too much. Oh. Should we switch over and see where you're at with yours? Yes. Okay. Walk people through like where you're at, what creating, you're going with. I think I'll do a drill down from categories to subcategories. I was thinking about that too. Yeah, I think drill downs are always nice. And something great with category drill down. Something great with the line chart is that there's a time aware, you can have a time aware axis. So you can zoom into it and it automatically will change the time. You don't need to go and do drill downs anymore. So if you zoom all the way out, it will give you like the year and you can go into the month and then to the day. So that's very useful. Nice. Dragging. Five minutes. I don't, you're getting pretty far there. I think we, we're further than we were with the previous visualizations, right? Yeah, I think so. That's a lot of lines. <laughs> I need to. Man, 
that's fine. Your data set exceeds the limit. Uh-oh. That's okay, I think. Hmm. You can't do that right now. Well... Do, 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 do. What are the colors? Make up sometimes. You're putting in the annotations. That's oh, yeah. Cool itself. Um, <laughs> Where is this city? We need like we should we should have come with music or something like this. Yes. Do, do, do. Does anyone want to come in and sing? To the watching. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, how do I make it so I can pick each one? Allow selections. I always get stuck on doing annotations. I'm always mm -hmm. like, how how do we do this again? I think it's. One more thing. What is segment? I don't know what that is. Let's add that in. Okay, the clock is ticking. Two and a half minutes. Hello. Data handling. Let's say that there's no limit. Now nah, that's fine. I'll just do tops. Okay. All right, Cody, I think I'm going to make you proud. Is Cody watching? Emily, are you um, watching? He said he would be. Hopefully he's not. Um, I don't see him in the list. I was trying to look for his name here. He said he might be able to check it out. Ooh, tip from the audience. Jane, you should use date as your first dimension. Ooh, for my know. that might have been a while back. I don't know where you're at with it, but I just saw that come in. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, I found that I need that too. All right, ten seconds. Oh no. <laughs> I'll get more orange juice. You can have another 10 seconds. <laughs> Ooh, 
Ooh, how do I get these annotations to work? That's the thing I'm stuck on. Oh, the date format to try to get them to line up. That can always be a little bit of a pain. Yeah. I'm trying to get like February 3rd. It's however discreet the dates are. So if it's day it's data, and it might have time in it sometimes, it has to be formatted exactly the same. But if it, it recognizes that as a, as a date, so that's the first step. Let's see if I can search the date. Yeah, what does the date come across when you get there? I get like... It's just the month, day, oh, year, right? Yeah, two, three, oh, eight, two, three, two dash, two slash, three slash, 2018. Yeah. Try that. So you had other annotations on there. I thought I saw them, but you can walk us through. Yeah, I've got a yeah. I've got one. Whoa. Good feedback, Lyra. When visualizing multiple lines, your ridgeline plot is going to be a better. I actually thought, Jane, you would go with ridgeline plot because you you had used them a lot as well recently. Yeah. I thought I could tell a cool story with uh, the annotations. With the annotations was, on it. I was, didn't think that there'd be so many lines. Yeah, it's tough if we, if we haven't massaged the data enough or really gotten a good hold on it to build those annotations. It takes just a, a bit of testing to get there. But you're not turning on the thing I thought you would turn on, and you just skipped by it. Should we do a readout? Uh, you you went first last time, right? I can do I can go first. Yes. What do you think? Uh, yes, you can go first. Okay, you'll get to see my uh, storytelling technique of I'll tell the story as it unfolds on the screen. Um, let's say we wanted to know out of our data which of our customers love to get first class shipments. So with the sand key, I would navigate into that. And then it shows us actually not a lot of people get their office supplies first class, but they get more technology first class mail. And these are the states that uh, have the top sales because, oh, sorry, I'm looking at average sales for each one. If I wanted to know top overall sales, let's see if it changes the story. Makes sense. There's more people in California. Uh, maybe we have more stores there that are purchasing. So maybe I do want to keep it on average. And we'll take a look at um, where's my state. Well, I'll just pick something real quick. So I can just type it in. So I want Florida and your home, North Carolina. We'll get rid of Ohio. Sorry if you're from Ohio. So now we see um, North Carolina and Florida, like first class, this is their average sales. They buy a lot of tech. But what do they actually buy? I added in alternative dimensions. So we can come in here and say, like, which products do they actually buy? And the average sales are higher on the Cisco IP conference phones <laughs> or the Motorola Moto X phone. Um, and then maybe I want to see... For, oh, that's really interesting, like the Moto X. And then I can go clear these other things and see actually which other areas as Moto X comes through. A first class is huge. I think it's catching up with my, my selections here. I might have too much data. Or maybe only Arizona and North Carolina by Moto X. I think that's yeah. actually what it's saying. So if I go back to the top, might have too many. There's a lot of nodes here. It's going to process this all and show us the top sold item is the Canon Advanced Copier. I can't remember the last time I used Copier. It's been a while. Definitely when I was at Office Max. So that's one of the stories you could tell or swap these things around. I really like this part of the sand key. 
um, you can change the flow around. And um, as it catches up here, it kind of changes the visualization. So it shows the proportions in relations to many different dimensions. Swap that back to segment, which I don't even think I used once. And then I see, yeah, corporate home office consumer. So this, this is why I really love this one. You can just kind of play with it and see all kinds of different uh, visualizations here or uh, insights here. Hmm? I think that's great. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it's it's fast to use, so too. It's one of my go-to one, go ones for sure. So let's see how where did you get with that line chart. Uh, Chris says Sankey's uh, clearly a powerful visualization for explanatory analysis. Nice. Oh, did this work? Uh, no, it did not. Always that for annotations. Maybe. If you yeah, put single quotes is... around it, does it work? This is a, no, it does not. Uh, it's finicky. There's okay. a way to do it that I will need to look at some old. And then Emily says, make sure there isn't an equal sign for your annotation and you just type it in, um, yeah. which I thought you tried to. Hmm. Interesting. I'll try it one more time. Zero two, zero three, thousand eighteen. No. That's okay. We you can explain what you're trying to do with it on yeah. the chart. Or take okay, a so we've got, what does the chart tell you? Yeah. We've got a crazy line chart, which I do agree would have definitely looked better in a ridge line plot. Let me <sighs> actually make this even bigger. Or I'll just full screen this. Oh yeah, just full screen the chart maybe. And yeah, yeah so you can see this data over the years. Um here you can add in different annotations, like uh, launch of the new distribution center. Ooh. Yeah, and you can actually change how it looks. Uh, don't definitely don't put it in the middle like what I did. Uh, <laughs> put it onto one side so it's easier to read. And then you can add annotations on here, so you can have like a little bubble, and it can tell you uh, like a story. Maybe you can say, "Oh, there's a dip here because there was a, you know, a sudden like over." Uh, I don't even know. There's like an overshipment of something, so they they couldn't yeah. sell enough. Um, same here. Like maybe every winter, uh, people buy less technology, or or every spring, people buy less because Christmas just passed. Um, Ooh, so you have seasonal data. Um, I thought well, you you rushed rushed over it, but you could just turn on forecasting real quick, and it could tell you what to predict out of the data. Um, ah, that's a good one. Yeah. That's like always my trick. Like, how oh, is this line chart any better? Ooh. Oh, it's zoomed in. Um, and then it'll forecast out, which has a new algorithm, I think, is like a, um, it's under advanced analytics. Okay, so what we can do is you select how many months before you want uh, the data to look at, and then also how many months after so should we keep it actually it isn't recognizing it as a date and there's a little hint a note at the bottom um the configuration for forecasting did not produce any results what if you um just just play around with this but take out the category dimension and just have the date and and see if it'll do a forecast yeah i think it's something to do with Oh, there's your annotation too. Yeah, there's my annotation. So um, um, might have been something to do with the category, I guess. Will it forecast? Yeah. Yes, it will. Hmm. Okay. It's one of those things where you have to like play around with it more. But yeah, if you see this. There you go. There's your annotation you try to put there. Do it a little higher. Yeah, you can, uh, if you actually know what the number that you want to reach is, where you can add in an expression in here as well, instead of guessing and say like the minimum. Yeah. Yeah. There's um, the, the one that I always show um, that has that forecasting built in, that just tells a great story, is just in our regular line chart example app. Um, and 
I don't know if you knew this, but it was like, it was very close to the initial story of Vizlib. And let me see if that one's it. If that's not, it's under story. Nope. I'll find it real quick here. But it has, you know, we when you're able to spend a bit more, um, a bit more time on it, and you know what the events are, you can get to something like this, which is like the full story of like a startup. They had a Series A funding. Um, and this is showing their their sales of their particular products and their cost of sales and how that's changed. They went to a conference. They did an alpha release. There's a huge surge. Let me put that annotation on top. And you can be able to call out these specific things like there was a shortage. We couldn't you know, manufacture as much as we had staffing issues. Um, and then even change the colors of the annotations. This, you know, that used to be, um, I don't know if we had it. This was the original line chart tells a story, like there's ups and downs, but that uh, that other one, just adding those annotations, this is like something you'd put in print. Like it tells a whole story, it's an infographic like thing. So yeah, I, I love the line chart. I keep forgetting to come back to it and do stuff like that. But if you spend time with the annotations, right? It's actually really cool. Yes, and we are running out of time, but a uh, quick note, Liren has just said, that a new forecast new forecasting is coming out next week for the line chart and um he also said that in the new version will support two dimension forecasting nice that'll help with the, the thing you're working on yes agreed so very cool well we'll have to do maybe we should dedicate some time to the line chart and see some other examples too mm -hmm. but what do you what do you have for next week you have somebody lined up uh, no, we're thinking about doing sneaky data. Uh, when data doesn't tell the full story, we're, when visualizations don't tell a full story, um, we're going to try to play around with that. I think there's a lot of sneaky data going on with this COVID epidemic. And uh, it's easy to hide data. So yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Very cool. Okay, I'll be ready for that one. Good stuff. We'll battle it out some more, I think. There's something interesting here <laughs> that we should keep doing this. Yeah. But awesome. Um, yep. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Thanks for joining. And uh, cheers. Your... Think. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Jane. Nice yes, episode. That was fun. <laughs> Bye, all. <laughs> See you, everyone. <laughs>